recording. 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 <coughs> so, this is the diving board prototype 2. And it's a homemade MIDI controller that I put together over several months at the start of last year. And the reason for its existence is that this synthesizer here, which I've had for quite a while but only recently started really learning how to use, has a lot of parameters in it which can be adjusted for a great deal of effects, as per usual for a synth, but the front panel, although it looks fairly detailed and full of knobs, isn't actually very conducive to fast editing. The instantaneous controls you have at the front, the filter, just the level for the amp, and a sort of basic envelope sort of thing, and an LFO. And that's your lot. This is your initial patch. Just a sort of a sawtooth sound. If you want to change that, you have to go in here to your tone edit. Then you have to go to the oscillator section and then pick your waveform. I have created this to make that easier. So for example here, we've got the um, waveform of oscillator 1 here. And that's changeable just from the front. And I've even put little labels there so you can see what's come up. And um, in addition to having eight parameters here, you've got the option to go through different pages of them. So these are all to do with the oscillator, but you've also got a mixer, which controls the relative volumes of the three oscillators, the master volume, and pans them. So let's just do an example of this quickly. We've got... If I bring in the other oscillators, so, set them all to sawtooth initially, turn them all on, and we get just a sort of louder sawtooth. Now, if I just quickly turn the fine tuning, now I can slowly work our way to a pad sound. So, we'll quickly adjust the panning which I've set for these lower ones here. And uh, let's just adjust in real time here, so. Now we've got a nice wide pad. Then we can go through to the amp here. Change our attack. But we don't currently have recorded in here the release. So we have to go in here again. get to the amp section, go to release, and adjust it manually. And so this thing has been created to solve two problems, the first being easy editing of stuff, which I've already demonstrated, and the second being easy adding of additional stuff to edit. So now we want to add the release to there. In most existing controllers I've found, you have to look up the MIDI implementation manual, find out what the MIDI message is for release, and then program it in some complicated way to that. And that's only applicable, in most cases, for common control messages. And if you want to do anything with SysX, like, say, for example, over here in the delay section, you can change the time of the delay or the, um, the feedback. That's all just SysX, so you just have to forget it, or get yourself a really expensive controller and mess about with the difficult software for a while. I think that's all quite unnecessary. Um, I've created a way here that you don't have to see a single MIDI message uh, as a user. And so to do that, we go into learning mode. So we get out of here. Go into this other program I've made called Adder. It just gives us some simple instructions to follow, which we're going to do now. So don't touch keys or controls on the synth. That's to prevent any MIDI messages from being sent while we're doing stuff. 
and then we go through the process by just pressing this button a whole bunch of times. So we navigate to the control we want to learn, turn out we were already there, and then we press button A, we set the control to its maximum, and uh, I'll explain why it's asking me to do what it's asking me to do. So the reason we set to maximum is to make sure it's not the minimum value. So we don't technically have to set to maximum on this one, it could just be one or two, but I'm just following it for the sake of it. We set it to the maximum to make sure it's not the minimum value. Click again, set it to the minimum, and now we are recording the messages that are being sent here. So this synthesizer, and lots of them, whenever they alter some parameter like this, they're sending a MIDI message internally to say, hey, set the release to 10. And uh, what we do is we're just listening to all those messages using this. This hears all the messages and then just records them. So now that we've got the message saying set the release to zero, we click that. Now we set it back to maximum. And now we're recording all of these messages. And this is the sweep that we uh, keep for use later. So now for every single value of the release parameter, we have an associated MIDI message saying, hey, set it to this or set it to that. And we choose which one of those messages to send from this back to the synth, depending on what position that knob's in. So it's like a replay attack. Once we've got that information, all we need to do is choose where to save this new control we've made. So there's three levels to this, to correspond with the three levels in this synth. First, you've got your different synthesizers. Each of these has several partials, and each of those partials has a section like an oscillator and a filter and an envelope, etc. So we've got several engines here. We've got D1, which is Digital 1. Analog, because I've saved some controls for the analog. Or we can add new. So if we were adding a control from Digital 2 or Drums, we could add those now. But we're not. So we go D1. Then we choose the partial. I've made a partial called Moog, which basically sets out controls on this screen in the same way that they're set out on the Model D. So uh, you saw earlier we had all the fine tuning options there and coarse tuning, and then the oscillator wave shapes down there. And the reason for that is just um, so everything's easy to edit at a glance. You can obviously set the controls however you choose. So you could create something which just has all the volumes for all the different drums on one page here and bring them all in and out whenever you wanted during a loop. It's uh, whatever you want, which is uh, sort of the point. In any case, we go into that one. We choose our section here. And again, if we were using, like, if we were adding to the LFO section, for example, and we were learning one of these controls, we could add a new one here, but we're not. Going into the app section. Now we enter a name for this parameter. So each of these can be any old thing. But I'm just going to set those to nothing. Move this through until we get R for release. This light, by the way, is just flashing whenever there's a message being sent from one of these controls through to the Raspberry Pi. That was initially for debugging, but I've just kept it because it looks neat. Anyway. We now have that name, so we hold that to confirm. Then it will tell us what we've done. So we've added a release control in the AMP section of the Moog partial of the D1 digital synth. Now we press A to finish. We go back to the main menu. We go back into the main diving board software. Navigate over to the AMP section and there's our new control. And as you can see, as I manipulate this control, and you look at that screen there, there we go. We've learnt the message. And so now we have our half made pad. And we can.
and that is how this works, how you learn new controls, and pretty much uh, what you can do with it. An added upshot of the way we're learning controls here, which is literally just listening to messages this is sending, recording them and then playing them back, is that if we had a different synth, for example, another one that's a little harder to edit, a micro where you've just got five knobs and a bajillion parameters, if you were to set the parameters you wanted to edit, you could then, I believe, although I've not tested this yet, you should be able to then do the same thing. Manipulate something on there, turn it from nothing to full to nothing again, like we did with the learning method on there earlier. It would send those MIDI messages out. You could record them on here and then send them back and get all of the controls to sort of uh, at a glance in front of you. So uh, yeah, that's the thing I made.